friends we are in a warm season my original warm season grass planting <laughs> When we originally established this field, we cover cropped it in the fall. We planted uh, chicory, annual ryegrass, winter rye, and clover. Then in the spring, we came in and we grazed it, and then we burn it off. We used an herbicide to kill the any of the plants it was here and then we seeded it in with four pounds of big blue stem here's some big blue stem it can easily be identified when it's in seed the seed head looks like a turkey foot we put four pounds of Indian grass and we also put two pounds of switchgrass per acre when we originally planted this. We went off of conventional uh, recommendations. To me at the time it made sense, but right now it doesn't make any sense to me. If you look at it, it's pretty much a, a monoculture. So what we did last year, we came in and we interseeded it with native legumes and forbs. Here's one of the exciting leg or forbs that we put in there. It's a purple cone flower, also known as echinacea. Has a beautiful smell to it. It's too bad we didn't have smell o vision Let's take a look at the field. We also have a lot of other things that we've plant interceded into this field. We did put some red clover at the time and a little white clover to help with the, the native grasses. This here's a cup plant. It's just a wee little cup plant because it's just in the establishment phases. As it grows and gets older, it'll get up to eight to 10 feet tall and have many, many blossoms on it. Here's some bergamot, wild bergamot, another wee little cup plant. You can see over here, here's one that is what it typically looks like in the first year of growth. So I'm assuming, or probably what has happened with a lot of the natives, there are a lot of them are hard seeded, which means they lay dormant until the, the and all the climate's just right and then they'll start growing. So this one here just started growing this year. Here's some milkweed. We have some patches of milkweed in this field. It's a native. This is known as common milkweed. It's a toxic plant. We have to be careful because the livestock in the way we're grazing, they will graze it and they eat it. But it's typically not a problem for us because it's less than 10% of the ration. Here's some more cup plant. So we have a lot of things that are establishing in this field at the time. Um, there's also, I don't see any at the, right now, but we also have tick trefoil interceded into this. There's also partridge pea Although partridge pea I wouldn't really recommend for grazing purposes because it takes a really long time for it to produce a seed. And it uh, 
typically will die out because uh, partridge pea is an annual. As you can see, the big blue stem is already back up growing and, and coming to the seed. We'll graze this field again this year. We'll graze this field again this year, but it probably won't be until late September before, or middle of September before we can get back on this field. We're starting to use a lot of natives on the farm because for me, they only make sense. Here's some Indian grass. See the seed head just starting to poke through. No, that's not Indian grass, that's big blue stem. This here would have been the graze line or where we put put our fence and the cows didn't quite get to this cup plant. The cup plants are very exciting for me because they have a lot of potential for heavy yield with very low, low inputs. Some more milkweed. I don't see any monarch caterpillars. They're here on some of the milkweed someplace because I keep seeing them flying around. Monarch butterfly utilizes the milkweed as the plant that it, it hosts off of. And it's very important that we don't kill these plants out so the monarch butterfly can make its migration from north to south. It's my understanding that the monarch butterfly makes the longest migration of any of the insects. Here's some Indian grass. Just come. It's mixed in with some switchgrass. It's mixed in with some switchgrass, but this here is Indian grass right here. As I was talking before, there's a lot of potential for our natives. There's more than 2,000 species that are native to the state of Pennsylvania. And that's the state that we're from, but there's a lot more plants from across the United States that, that are native to your area. And I think that they should be looked at. We've done extensive testing, or forage analysis testing, to see if, the, if it's, uh, Good enough quality for our livestock. I haven't tested anything that isn't good enough quality for our livestock at one point or another in the growing season. We have lots and lots of insects in this field. We also have a lot of birds and you can hear the crickets chirping hopefully maybe. I don't know. Lots and lots of crickets. We don't see many grasshoppers on the farm anymore. Uh, as things have become a lot healthier and whatnot the sugar content of the grass is higher and they're not able to survive on the farm because they have no pancreas. As you can see, the field on the right is shorter than the field on the left. We actually grazed this down a little bit shorter than I would have liked. 
but it's coming back well. It's coming back well, and when we come back in here, it'll probably be chest high or a little bit higher. A lot of clovers in underneath. But I thought you'd like to see it. Thanks for watching the video. Hit the subscribe button. Please comment and hit the like button also. Have a great day. May your grazing be prosperous.